there are 36 European technology platforms. So uh, Manufacture is one of them, and uh, we are one of the platforms under this umbrella. So we would like to support and continue to go forward to take the nanotechnology, which is a very key enabling technology, uh, to bring it to the practice. The, the new slogan is research to retail. So we will be in, in the middle of manufacturing to bring the products or services to the market. Uh, just a few slides about Manufacture for those people who are not uh, knowing about it. The idea of Manufacture mission is uh, to propose, develop, and implement research and innovation to speed up the high added value products processes and services to uh, secure high skilled employment at the same time to get a good share of manufacturing in Europe. Actually, this is the history and it started 2003 in uh, Italy and uh, so I should say that Christos Rukmanis, who, who was also one of the founding members, so we have followed his advice. So it started in 2003. We had a high level group uh, formed in 2004 and also made a vision document. And it was uh, a research agenda was made and it was also implemented, started in uh, seventh framework. There were also other programs like Eureka and uh, uh, Iranet activities. And later in 2009, we, we, there was a financial crisis and European Union recognized manufacturing is one of the key sectors to support. So they wanted to start a, a private-public partnership, PPP, and that was a factors of future that's running for the last two years. We hope it will continue. Uh, this gives an overview what are the main uh, activities. So we have four pillars. Uh, like I said in the beginning, high added value products. And to bring the products, you need some business model. And also we look, uh, also a little bit uh, medium time, look for some new processes and also enabling technology. So in the last one, it fits very clearly. Of course, this was made 2004, but it's reality now. Uh, one of the enabling technologies, uh, nanotechnology, and the vertical, we have a driving force and that is mainly competition. We have to compete with the Far East in the manufacturing and also you have to be eco and sustainable, and then societal and also other regulation aspects. Uh, this gives what we really do in manufacturing. So normally what we do is you take any material, we have a list of materials, and then we use a particular process and the machine to make parts, and then once the parts are made, you have to assemble them and you make product. So this uh, is, is applicable for all the uh, sectors, consumer products, textile, automotive. In place of uh, normal materials will be <laughs> nano materials, and also you will see easy lot of machines, and you have to assemble them. Uh, it can be nano in integrated as composite, or it can be nano surface and make it as a product. And again, you will be l dealing it in all these sectors. So, uh, what we are uh, trying to do is uh, micro nano technology to bring it to normal production or manufacturing industry. So we have a very common goal to achieve it. It's already mentioned many times. So these are the 11 platforms. And most of them, you can define them uh, users like uh, textile and um, transport. And also, you can see some manufacturing uh, activities and also material activities. Uh, and the horizontal activity said safety is also covered. They are the 11 platforms out of 36 platforms. Uh, so, uh, none of features people have asked all these 11 platforms to give their needs for the coming years and they asked them to also indicate what are the actions to be taken and also divide into three, uh, short term, medium term and long term and also to select the priority they have asked to give also Im expected impact. Uh, this gives an overview ex uh, of all the requirements and mainly what it comes down is you have a low cost, high volume production and also this transport, uh, they ask more for uh, coating, for functionality and it can be friction or as some uh, cleaning or whatever it is. And then also SASCAM people are interested in sustainable uh, tech activities, uh, construction people ask for 
uh, self-healing because they want to keep the maintenance of the buildings uh, cheaper. And you, you can see for ENIAC, they are interested in high-performance transistors and uh, MENOM, of course, for the production, mass, mass scale production of nano uh, technology. So this gives an uh, idea, as I said earlier, there were 50 uh, needs that right there. It gives a distribution of different uh, platforms. And the mostly the religious are working on that. I'm happy about it. So this is being addressed. And uh, the second one is, uh, when you want to use nano technology, there are two possibilities. You can use it. You can make a new product, or you can improve the performance. Uh, so on both sides, you need some uh, guidelines, design guidelines, what can be done, what cannot be done. The reason is the people who are outside this community may not know what are the possibilities of nanotechnologies and nanomaterials. So I strongly recommend to have a design uh, <coughs> principles or guidelines. I'm happy this design is already taken over in the notes of the nano future in the, took in the future. Uh, so, of course, this gives an idea what are the possible applications. So, uh, as indicated, coating and adhesives and composites will be the first application and it will be there in all other areas. The next one is, uh, next requirement is uh, people are expecting nanomaterials to be environmental friendly. And what will happen if you make nano products and it, if it goes into the end of life, uh, li life, life cycle, does it going to accumulate and that is going to give a harmful? So we need to have a good life cycle analysis and give some guidelines so that people will not be worried and it can be safely used. Uh, third one is uh, renewable materials. There's also a lot of discussion going on also in the Union, uh, European Union agenda that raw materials and it should be resource efficient. It needs to be also uh, uh, reusable. So nowadays uh, many uh, products are coming up in using the normal fossil uh, source, but it will be also worth considering natural sources in all these nano materials. I go to the fourth need. Uh, see, the main thing is we have to check the uh, toxicity of the material or product on the spot. Now it takes a long time to say, yes, it's safe, it's not safe. So this is a, uh, it's a request from the community to develop some a lab on chip type testing so that it can be checked faster and then they can go forward. Of course, it cannot be done in short term, it will be medium to long term. Uh, the fifth one is there are a lot of nanoparticles available and they are also produced in tons, but there are also some new nanoparticles coming up. They are also uh, environmental friendly and also a uh, uh, substitute for scarce materials. Example here is. Uh, cadmium. So, as everybody knows, in the in the photovoltaic second generation of photovoltaic is thin film. It's based on cadmium, indium, selenium, and cadmium is very uh, toxic. And they are looking for an alternative. At uh, the same way, you see gallium. Gallium is very scarce, so we should look for uh, alternative. And in this case, silicon and zinc is being uh, developed, and they are in lab scale. And now we have to go for mass scale. This will be also the next need. Uh, where are they used? As I indicated, it will be used in photovoltaic and also it will be used in uh, lighting. Sorry. The next possible application, as everybody said, if you arrange nanoparticles or create a structure in a very orderly manner, it improves the performance of photovoltaic and also for lighting. So, as Chris was mentioned, there are possibilities to increase the efficiency uh, than the present one and it will help the increase, decrease the price and at the same time it will be able to compete with other uh, energy source. So this can be done now in lab scale and small scale, but we also have to upscale it, which can be made in roll to roll and also in continuous fabrication. Uh, the last one is, this is a little bit futuristic and I think it's also happening. If you arrange the materials, nanomaterials in particular structure and layer and particular location, it can be made to act as sensors and uh, act, act sensors and actuators. So this will also miniaturize all the sensors, and the advantage will be you can make millions of uh, 
sensors in small uh, volume and it can be used in huge uh, potential for the future. And the other possibility is if you arrange this material in particular location, you can also use it for data storage and also you can use it for data communication. This is not a short term, but it will be a long term. Uh, conclusion. So uh, we have given our inputs. I have seen already they have been taken up and uh, we will continue to work uh, together to make it a reality. So the main message is three. So give attention for design and then safety and then scaling up. If we can do it, I'm sure we will work together and we will create a very new nano manufacturing industry. The present market, I understand, 140 billion, and we hope we will go to 1,000 billion in the near future with cooperation between manufacturing and future. Thank you for your attention.